since joining YouTube, I've always been a bit bemused by the amount of anger and emotional reactions atheists have over William Lane Craig. I guess since Craig is one of the most outspoken Christian philosophers and public debaters, this is to be expected. However, what is deeply concerning are the levels some atheists are willing to descend in order to try to discredit their opponents. Going back now to Thunderfoot's video entitled William Lane, Two Citations Craig. It's kind of funny that exactly the same day Thunderfoot uploaded that video, this article appeared in the Guardian newspaper in the UK. Philip Bell accused it of being the academic equivalent of the stag's antlers. In other words, Dr Mason is doing nothing other than dick measuring at this point. Then there are academic institutions which warn about the abuses of overly simplistic comparisons of H-index figures. Notice the advice here from the University of Southampton, which states that you can only com compare values within a single discipline. Dr. Mason fails to heed this advice with his shoddy video. The article even points out that such a cross-discipline comparison might make an average medical researcher look good compared to a world-class mathematician. It's also interesting that the article picks out the humanities as an area to be wary of too. Another reason to beware of Dr Mason's figures are that a couple of the papers which he cited had only just been published, but Dr Mason doesn't bother to tell you this. So what happens when we take professional advice and compare Dr Craig with only people in his own field? Well, the latest H-index comparison I could find in philosophy of religion was done back in 2007 as, and as one might expect, Alvin Plantinga was rated first. However, you will also notice Dr. Craig at 14th. In the top 20 on an H-index in your own field of study could well be worthy of saying something like world class. Going back to the professional advice about not comparing across subjects, perhaps we might be tempted to say that a naive comparison of H-index results might make an average scientist look better than a world-class philosopher. But of course, keep in mind that real academics don't like talking this way about themselves. I've certainly never heard a university professor quoting his H-index results to gain kudos. Notice the extremely highly regarded Linda Zagzebski up there alongside Craig. She commands tremendous respect in the subject and yet most atheists will not have heard of her. This is why when Dawkins tells people not to be surprised if they've never heard of Craig, well, he's right, they shouldn't be, unless you read lots of philosophy of religion or closely related subjects, you would never know who these people are. Also notice, the atheist philosopher Michael Tooley also rated 14th alongside Dr Craig. Is Dr. Mason ready to accuse Michael Tooley of being an academic midget? I, for one, would love to see that video, but it's not going to be made, and we all know why. On that same list, down in 32nd place, is an oft-cited atheist philosopher who again commands the highest respect in the philosophy of religion, Graham Oppie. Well, if Craig is a midget at 14th, is Oppie an intellectual teddy bear compared to Dr. Mason? One more interesting thing to notice is that in a highly regarded lighter blog, there was research done on the most discussed metaphysicians. And alongside names such as Kripke, Carnap, Strawson, Descartes and Maudlin, was William Lane Craig. This is interesting because metaphysics is not even Craig's main field.
The resounding theme of my research is that you can find lots of YouTube popular level atheists who don't read philosophy criticising Craig. What you won't find is too many people within the philosophy of religion or within philosophy more broadly doing such criticisms of Dr. Craig. I think I have more than responded to the trite accusations commonly thrown at Dr. Craig, but especially the videos by Thunderfoot and DPR Jones. And my suggestion to both of them is to start doing some real academic work in the field. Why is it that no academics in philosophy of religion are talking about Thunderfoot or DPR Jones? Is this the best that they can do in responding to a genuine academic? If so, then I genuinely feel very sorry for both of these guys. Here to conclude are some quotes from real academics about Craig. Well, I've only had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Craig once. We were on a panel together at the Christian Book Expo in Dallas um, the other day. But it was a large and unwieldy panel, so I didn't get a sense of his, his form. Um, but I can tell you that my, um, my brothers and sisters and co-thinkers in the unbelieving community take him very seriously. He's, he's thought of as a very uh, tough guy, and very rigorous, very scholarly, very formidable. And I, would, I, would, I say that without reserve. I, mean, I don't say it because I'm here. A lot of, normally I don't get people saying good luck tonight you know kind of thing and don't, don't let us down you know uh, but with him I do <laughs>of uh, this debate for the invitation to take part. I am I'm genuinely honoured uh, to be showing the stage with uh, Professor Craig this evening. Just very lastly, I'd like to point out, if you look at the Wikipedia article that Thunderfoot himself gave you a little uh, quotation from at the top of the article, if you go down to the bottom of that article, you will find ten criticisms of uh, the H-Index. Uh, two of the most important listed there being that the H-Index does not consider the context of citations. So in other words, your citations might be negative ones. They might actually be citations where, you know, you're being pointed out that you have made complete and utter fallacies. So a citation does not uh, necessarily indicate anything about the performance of that academic.
the H index can be manipulated through self citations as well. This is one huge problem that the H index has. So, citing yourself, if that makes it into the statistics on an H index, that's also highly problematic. Also, you, you don't need to be a, any kind of philosopher of note to notice that if you're really genuinely suggesting that your prowess on an H index gives you some kind of esteem as an academic, really you are making a very obvious ad populum fallacy. And this is just plainly obvious. So, in summary, Thunderfoot Thank you for playing the game of popularist philosopher once again. We are getting very, very bored with especially atheistic scientists trying to have a go at this genre of thinking. Really, you're going to need to work on it. I strongly suggest that you find yourself some very basic introductions to how to do philosophy and how to think in other ways other than scientific ways. because. As things stand, Thunderfoot, you're embarrassing me. You're a fellow Brit, and frankly, I find it embarrassing that you could be this absurd. But that's not really an argument.